And they say, I believe, a 30 testosterone level start to, start to drop. Well, they peak at 19. So, peak at 19. yeah, we think they probably drop gradually from then. Really? Yeah, and okay, some people might have depression. And yeah, there is an overlap. But it's important that these men are checked for their mm. hormone levels. Yeah. <laughs> Don't just talk it, walk I'll tell you now. I once did that Come Dine Don't With Me show. Just talk it, oh, it's hilarious. I mean, so many takes. Really? Yeah, you know. <laughs> just Talk, you walk up and knock the door. Yeah. And it's like, oh, a dog will have barked. Okay, back down. Walk up, knock the door. You know the program. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's like, right, let's do that. Oh, my life. You won't come down yeah. with me. Wow. How did that come about? Oh, I, do we want to? <laughs> it's random. Do you, you have know, a good time? One of those yes moments. Yeah, all right, I'll do that. <laughs> Very spontaneous of you. Yeah. It worked out well. Did you win? I didn't win. It was amusing, though. Yeah. Oh, it was a good laugh. There's some interesting cats on there. Not cast, but... Special. Special, yes, yeah, special. Well, look, Dr. Sorry. Janine David, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks, Sully. How are you? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very good. I'm very grateful for you coming on today because, obviously, the power of connection. Yeah. But on top of that, um, this topic which we're going to talk about today, I feel like this will give a lot of clarity to a lot of people. Um, and even myself, just awareness on my own body and where yeah. I'm at. I'm, I'm, I'm 30, close yeah. to 31, and, and they say, I believe, a 30 testosterone levels start to start to drop well they peak at 19 so peak at 19. yeah we think they probably drop gradually from then yeah okay but okay yeah more so when you get older mm. you need to be concerned but it, we are seeing more at younger ages as right. well so before we get into it then janine give us a little bit of a background on what you do who you are <laughs> so you can give all the answers because as you can see right now there's a lot of a uh, lot of uh, expertise that you are in Okay, well, how long we got? <laughs> um, okay, so I'm a GP by yeah. trade initially, and then I got interested in sexual medicine. Um, I do a vasectomy clinic, and I end up doing an erectile dysfunction and testosterone clinic, which technical terms called andrology in the hospital. And then I also have my own private men's health clinic, mainly focusing on sexual dysfunction. Yeah. So, yeah, erectile dysfunction, testosterone deficiency, premature ejaculation, and any sort of sexual problems, yeah. really. Wow, there's a lot of things there, but you know, we've talked about committees, you don't want to go too much into them, but yeah. you're part of the European part and you're part of the Great Britain. Yeah, so I'm a secretary for the British Society of Sexual Medicine, and that links us to the International Society of Sexual Medicine, and I'm also a fellow of the European Committee of Sexual Medicine. Wow. So I'm not very involved in sexual medicine, yeah. I do a lot of writing, I talk around the world, I'm a member of the Androgen Society, so that's wow. mainly based in the States, so I'm back and forth there as well doing quite a lot of work and research with testosterone yeah. mainly for them. It's interesting, right, when you say about all these things. How does, for instance, I thought a, a man would be more lured towards unfolding all of this for men, but obviously you've got a deep interest in it. Where does it all stem from with yourself wanting to do it? <laughs> if this is a question... I know, it's difficult, isn't it? I think... Years ago, when somebody said to me, did I want to do an erectile dysfunction clinic? I think it was the guy that was teaching me vasectomies. It was probably 10, 12 years ago. And I thought, mm, actually, maybe. And then I ended up getting involved in sexual medicine and mm. with a really nice cohort of people. I found it really interesting. And then I got involved with testosterone as well and hormones and men's mm. health and realising that men actually don't come to the doctor as much as they should. And we know that men's health has been very overlooked compared to women's health. We know there's been so much on menopause and stuff yeah. with Davina McCall and all that. But not at all with men's health. I kind of feel I need a Davina McCall for men's health Love because it. men don't come. They're not treated as they should be when they do come and see us because the knowledge just isn't out there from sort of a patient point of view, but also mm. from the professional point of view as well. So they do get a raw deal, actually, men. Not wow. always, but in this field, they do. Wow, it's, it's interesting, but it's so common, right? Because I think women are very good at empowering, bringing awareness. Yeah. And men, unfortunately, we try to chuck it under the carpet and try and tough it out at times well for sure i th still think men feel that being unwell makes them vulnerable mm. and they don't want to feel vulnerable and it's almost like there's still it sounds a bit 80s now and i always think of that sunita song so macho but <laughs> for those of you from the 80s but i think men still feel it's not macho to yeah. be unwell and you know they don't feel strong and they don't like being unwell and they don't want to admit to being unwell or yeah. men don't also like to admit to not knowing about things mm. as well. It's just, we're Ego just different. Based. And they're not quite as good at 
perhaps communicating. This is a bit of a sweeping statement, but... No, but that's... I understand. On the whole, men aren't quite as good as expressing their feelings as women. Mm. So I think there's a quite a good statistic that sort of 80% of men would want to be asked about sex when they go for a consultation, mm. but only 20% would actually volunteer that information. Mm. So it's sort of down to us as medics to ask these things, you know. You need to tease it out of people yeah. a bit and be brave and talk about sex. Perhaps it's a bit of a British thing as well. We're not very good at talking mm. about these things. Might be a, might be a British thing. Yeah. I'm fortunate in living in Australia for that period. I yeah. think we're very, very open to these things. I think sometimes they might be a couple of years ahead of us on these aspects regarding openness to talk about. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I see it as what you don't know, you don't know. But if I can, if I should be feeling better or should be looking better or some symptoms that I'm lacking, then I would like to think that if there was a an option that I could use something, then I'd want to use it. Yeah, right? you need to do something about it. But. So if, if that's the case then, Janine, what are the common signs, for instance? I bet you hear this all the time, but what are the, like, the early symptoms of t- test on... Um, testosterone-like deficiency? Okay, so for testosterone deficiency, people will probably know about the sexual ones. So, of course, erectile dysfunction, loss of sex drive, so low Mm. libido, they'd be the major um, symptoms of testosterone deficiency. But it's not always that. Often men present to me with low mood and sort of not a depression, more of a general feeling flat, a bit more irritable, can't be bothered to do anything. Mm. So the sort of guy that would be out at work and then come home and usually go to the gym or go for a bike ride and now just can't really be bothered. And they often say they've lost their zest for life, you know, Mm. just that can't be bothered to do anything anymore. So people often present like that and they often will have been treated for depression wrongly, um, which will make sexual dysfunction worse as well. So it will be... That sort of person, or sometimes people get problems with sleep, yeah. flushes, that sort of thing, a bit like sort of menopausal yeah. symptoms. Um, weight gain, so lo- in- increased um, weight around the middle, so more belly fat, yeah. less muscle mass, not having the exercise gains perhaps they once mm. used to, all of these sort of things, you know, and sometimes these symptoms can be a bit vague. You know, you read a list and you think, mm, yeah. I could tick yes to all of those. Yeah. But tiredness, just lack of energy, general not yeah. feeling themselves. And perhaps partners will say, oh, God, you're so irritable at the minute and things like that. And, you know, yeah, treated for depression, it's not actually that. Yeah, and yeah. we're seeing more and more of it in younger men Cause for it's multitudes so, of reasons. Because it's so common. When you're talking about these things now, it's so... People would put a lot of these under mental health. A lot of these sectors... That's are, right. You know, you've got mental health issues or you've got X, Y, and Z. But it's... They, they correlate, but they don't, obviously. Yeah, and okay, some people might have depression, mm. and yeah, there is an overlap, but it's important that these men are checked for their mm. hormone levels rather than just go straight in with giving an antidepressant. Mm. That's, that's a great, yeah, I'm a big believer in that. I don't think we should band aid something unless we really need to. Yeah. Um, what do you, so how would someone then, for instance, you know, what are the procedures to get someone in and tested, and what does the test look like? Even? Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. I usually get patients to fill out a questionnaire, which is quite good because it gives me a scoring system. Um, and then if I go on, if people go on to have treatment, we can see how their score um, improves. So that's yeah. quite a good marker. Um, but then the basis is just a blood test. Mm. Um, there's a few things that we check when we do the blood test. Yeah. It's not just testosterone. We check other parameters as well because the co- you want to try and work out the cause of the yeah, testosterone yeah. deficiency. So we would check hormones from the brain as mm. well as the testes. So, yeah, we do hormone tests. We tend to do blood levels, thyroid levels as well, nice. just to look what's related. It's important to have a diabetes screen and to check mm. cholesterol levels as well, especially if patients have got erectile dysfunction, which we can go on yeah, to yeah, over yeah. another uh, sort of if you want to talk about that a bit later. Sure. We'll yeah. jump onto that later. Um, so those are that would be your basic tests initially for testosterone. It's interesting because I just see it as now when we're talking about it right now, I just see it as a healthy MOT. Like yeah. you know, a car gets an MOT. Yeah, this is our MOT as a person. Exactly. I mean, I'm all for men with any of these potential yeah. symptoms having. A testosterone check, really. This is another thing when you're talking about all of these symptoms. And I know growing up, for instance, guys that I've been brought up with, and you know, we talk about men without egos. A lot of people, you know, take enhancements in sports, steroids, which obviously, from my awareness and knowledge on it, is it spikes your testosterone. It also spikes your estrogen levels as well. But once you stop taking the synthetic form, 
one will start to drop, which will be testosterone. Estrogen levels will still maintain. Well, yes. So, so <laughs> this is my <laughs> education. You could jump in now. You're <laughs> the expert. Okay, so. The excess use of anabolic steroids is certainly one of the reasons why we're seeing increased testosterone deficiency in men a bit later in their life once they've stopped yeah. taking steroids. Yes, the, it depends on what steroids they're taking, but it can increase estrogen levels. Mm. Not, not with everybody, and it depends, and it depends how much people are taking. And often these men um, taking steroids in the gym will take anti-estrogen tablets yes. to bring estrogen down as well. The main issue with it all is when... You take testosterone externally, mm. you will knock off your own production. Right. And then you will also knock off your own pituitary. The pituitary is the gland that tells the testes to produce testosterone. Uh. And you will knock off the hormones telling your testes to produce testosterone. And this can be lifelong. So the trouble with this is that it can render you infertile and your testosterone levels may never recover. Wow. The chances of them, it depends on how long you've used it for. Everyone's individual with respect to hormones, so it depends on that as well. Um, so that's why we are seeing an increase, and we do need to be thinking of these guys and checking their levels as well. Wow. Um, yeah, it is, a, it is a problem. And it's, then it's you complex. have to treat these patients because, I, well, I feel you do because, okay, they've done, testo you know, they've done steroids, but they've stopped them. But you, if you don't treat them, it's like not treating a smoker or an asthmatic, yeah. uh, people who drink or things like that. When you treat them, though, it can be difficult because they are used to really high levels of testosterone. But you, as a professional medic, I would have to treat to, in effect, normal testosterone normal levels. Yeah. What's been your most interesting? Obviously, you can't say the names and I don't want to you. But I mean, what's been your like? You see someone maybe like flatline nothing, and you're like, how are you? How are you functioning? Or is it that the case sometimes or S below? Yeah, sometimes I've. Ha you know, the, this is why it's so rewarding because you see people and they are feeling absolutely rock bottom, mm -hmm. dreadful, and then almost at the point of divorce with their families wow. and things like that. And you treat them and it's like, wow, incredible. They are back to normal life again. Yeah. That's why I love this job. It's amazing. It doesn't happen overnight. Oh. Hormones take a while to respond. Um, at least three to six months to feel better up to a year for erections to improve. So you are mm. on it on it for a long time, probably lifelong. That's not, That's not for everybody. Thing, though, right? but no, because you are replacing something that is normal in the body. Yeah. So it's not like taking a medication, really, because no. you're just replacing a hormone that was low. It's kind of like, you know, um, people are low iron deficient, and they have to yeah. take iron, iron or B12 or something like that. Or thyroid, yeah, thyroid, exactly yeah, yeah. the same. You're just replacing a hormone level that was low. There's one thing, though, that I always think is important to point out, Ollie, is that people often think, OK, look, my levels are a bit low. Can I have some extra? And you're like, well, no, no, because it doesn't work like that. Because as soon as you take it externally, you're dropping your production and you are just solely relying on the external mm. therapy. So you can't have a top up. So does, if, does this affect, Janine, then, if, for instance, you want a kid one day mm -hmm. and you started to have this replacement now? Yeah. It, yeah. Yes, it can, because it can render you infertile because it will knock off the hormone that tells the testes to produce sperm as well. So you do have to be careful. There are alternatives to testosterone that we can use instead, and we can give um, a drug called HCG to help the testes produce sperm as well. So there's ways around it. What's um, the stand for HGC? Human chorionogonadotrophic hormone. <laughs> I thought it was something else. No. <laughs> well, that last word. Okay, oh, I'm lost yeah. here. But wow. So just say HCG. Yeah, it's easier. Nice. Yeah. It's, it's it's very. This is all green to me. So I'm sitting here like a little school school kid just learning, and in, I'm interested because, you know, I do have uh, peers and friends who I know who are doing testosterone boosters and yeah, stuff like that. And lots of people are. It's really it's common. So very common. I think you know, um, for instance. I don't know if you ever heard Joe Rogan talks a lot yeah. about testosterone and how he's, but he's 57, 58. Yeah. And, you know, you're that stage. But if you're maybe 28, 27, 26, you know, you're not at that stage where you, you might, if you're doing it just to enhance and look better, should that be the case? I'm going to have to say no mm. to this, aren't I? Yeah. I don't think you should be taking it for that reason. You should only really be using testosterone if you've got low levels and really symptoms and signs. Mm. You shouldn't just be taking it because, as I said, you are going to damage your own testosterone. Yeah. And it also needs to be monitored. It's not without its problems. It can thicken the blood. Wow. Um, that's probably the main concern with it. And obviously, we talked about the fertility issue. Mm. So you don't want to just be taking it. And obviously, very high levels start causing yeah. problems with 
heart disease and things like that. So you've got to be careful. So interesting how the body works. And the more we talk about this now, it just makes me think we're all connected in a certain way. Like you said, you know, you, there's a route to everything. Like instead of just like band-aiding it with something, we want to figure out what it is, what's, where's it coming from, and then yeah. understanding. And then that's where your magic comes in place. And well, it must be rewarding, though, for you to, when you see a family back, yeah. fully function, I'm, happy again, and sex yeah. life is back. I, I, absolutely. I mean, I've... I, you know, I do a lot of talks about testosterone and I've taken several of what I call my expert patients with me because yeah. when I'm talking to doctors, for example, and trying to say, look, we, this is why we need to be checking levels. If you've got a real life patient there that's saying, oh, you know, I was this bad and now I'm great normal again, it's quite powerful. Yeah. Um, so it, it is amazing. Mm. And also people like, um, you know, 50% of type 2 diabetics will have testosterone deficiency. Type 2. Type wow. 2 diabetics, obesity, uh, men who are obese will mm. have low testosterone. And treating all these patients, they do do really well because you think you've got someone who's obese who's going to be at risk of type 2 diabetes. You know, are they going to be motivated to go to the gym to change their lifestyle? No. Probably not, not, especially not if their testosterone is low unless you, you know, engage yeah. with them and start treating them. You might better yeah. then stop the testosterone in those patients as well. What are the common, what, like, what is something, like, for instance, for me, if I was like, okay, I, I, you know, my levels, for instance, were just a bit lower than normal. Let's okay. hyper, uh, talk in hyper. But I, what are natural things that I could do which could improve my situation? Well, there are some. The evidence on it is a bit mixed. Mm. Um, so training, in, you know, increasing your lean muscle mass to mm. fat ratio because unfortunately testosterone is broken down in the fat tissue to estrogen we yeah. mentioned estrogen before and that's often one of the reasons why men have high estrogen levels because it's broken down in the fat tissue so the fat you are around the belly the more testosterone is broken down to estrogen so one of one of the things you could do is lose weight yeah, yeah. um obviously exercise is really important diet wise broccoli actually because it contains a substance, I don't know whether you've heard of this, called DIM. Don't ask me what it stands for. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Broccoli is very good. Broccoli is actually very good. And there is some evidence that that can improve your testosterone to estrogen ratio. I've got every man now listening to this buying all the broccoli. <laughs> buying broccoli. He's at Tesco's <laughs> just cleaning up. <laughs> so, I, you know, it may be worth a try. Yeah. There's other things like zinc and vitamin E and vitamin D possibly will help yeah. i'm not one huge one for supplements i just think if you've got a really good diet yep. you shouldn't need supplements cool. testosterone the blood test isn't totally straightforward because initially we check what's called a total testosterone yeah. but actually we need what's called a free testosterone and tell me if you want me to shush because i'm being too technical no but let's go let's go most of testosterone 98 percent of it is bound in the body to a protein called shbg you don't need S to know yeah, yeah, yeah. and albumin now, the more of this SHBG you have, it's a bit like having um, all your money in the bank and not much in your pocket to use. Yeah. So the more that the bank holds on to, so the more the SHBG holds on to, the less you've got available to use. And lots of things can affect this SHBG. So it's important to know what's called your free testosterone as well, not just your total. And I know it does get a bit confusing, yeah, yeah. but it's actually an easy calculation we can do. Yeah. with blood tests so basically you've got this testosterone which is stored but you can't basically that's get right it's not it. what it's we not would available. say bioavailable yeah, exactly yeah. the right word so there are things that affect shbg and there is some evidence but again it's mixed and it depends what you read that says boron can improve shbg levels can reduce them but it's mixed i've tried yeah. it with a few people and just to the see best responses some people have improved yeah it's horses for courses, all right? Like, again, my body might react well to it, yours... I think so. A, a guy, another guy's wouldn't. You know, and some of these things are worth trials. I think in the future, we're going to know more about these, yeah. and clever people in labs are doing lots of research into yeah. SHBG and what causes it to be high or low, because both can be not great for longevity and morbidity and mortality. So. Wow. Is intimate fasting at one <laughs> which helps? Because it's a big crazy, though. Gary Brecker talks about it, and all of these yeah. top uh, guys out there and girls, and... The same fasting helps? I think it probably does. I don't want to say this because I hate starving, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like a good feed. I think I think anything that reduces inflammation yeah. is a good thing. Inflammation is really bad, so fasting, we know, does improve our inflammatory markers in a good way. Sugar, as yeah. well, is another one that is really bad for causing inflammation. Yeah. And obviously, frustratingly, alcohol, alcohol. smoking, not exercising... 
So I wonder what everything in moderation, Mike. I wonder what these new vapes. Uh, I hate I'm them. Totally anti vapes. Don't get me started yeah, on there. Yeah. Would be another hour, but because yeah. they're, they're a whole different dynamic, which we, we probably don't know. don't know the full extent to. There is no way inhaling chemicals into your lungs can be a good thing, yeah. though. And you can charge Just it up by a USB port. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not good either. No, no. all is bad with vapes. Bad yeah. news. <laughs> what are, the, for instance, then? They've said over years, I've seen some form of study on it, like, you know, the, the percentage of testosterone a man is producing now to what he was maybe 50 years ago is decreasing. It is. What is this from, Janine? I think it's a combination of factors. So we mentioned steroid users, so yeah. that would be one thing. Um, 67% of men over 45 are obese. Mm. So that's going to be one thing. So diet and lifestyle, are, you know, too much processed foods, things yeah. like that, not having the right nutrition. Then other things like... Probably plastics, phytoestrogens in our food, our water, things like that. Yeah. It probably, we don't know, but we think it's likely to be contributing to this decrease in testosterone. So it's probably a combination yeah. of all these factors from lifestyle yeah. to external pollutants, yeah. steroid use, all of these things, in, and the increase in obesity and type 2 diabetes, which are linked obviously to lifestyle factors, because all of that is reversible. But that's probably why testosterone levels are on the decrease. Same with sperm counts, again, on the decrease, probably for the same reasons. You're talking about this now. Just, I, again, this might be nonsense, but they talk about frequencies like phones, laptops, and all of these things. Is that a, a bit of a mm. wishy-washy thing? I think there's not enough evidence to say that they cause problems. Mm. It depends what you read, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and of course. And that's, there's so much information out there. What there is, is right and what isn't. And... I think reasonably there isn't the evidence yeah. to say that they are an issue. I have looked into it because I do sleep by my phone. <laughs> it's interesting. Well, <laughs> but we'll see. More will come out again about that, won't it? We don't know enough about it at the moment to say. Mm. This is, uh, I'm very interested in this. It's, my, it's funny, right? I have a bit of an idea of how I wanted this to go, and it's gone the total opposite way, but I okay. love it. I love it because, you know, it just gives you me a different perspective because from my perspective, I feel myself, I'm good. Yeah. I'm healthy, I'm pretty upbeat most days, my energy. But then, you know, when you say a few things like, oh, you know, sleep deprived, this, that, and the other, you know, I have a couple of days where I struck, I, I wake up super early and I'm lying there for an hour. But I just think that's just, you know, if there was a common pattern, maybe I'd be like, hang on, this, I mean, not right. But if yeah. it's just for a day or two, then, okay, it's just maybe you had a bad dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got to be moderate with yeah, all this. Yeah. Stuff, you? But yeah, testosterone is produced when you sleep, so you do need to sleep. Cool, so... Yeah. Again, then, if we were talking, what's the, would you say is it a right amount of hours of sleep which could promote testosterone in people? Well, what I was reading recently was that we all should be going to bed by 10 o'clock mm. mm, and having a good eight hours. And it's those two hours before midnight that count. Mm. That's a bit depressing. I'm a, I'm a late person, so it doesn't suit me. But <laughs> I'm, an e but I'm a late, I'm an early sleeper and an uh, early riser. See, that's probably, that's ideal. I think that probably is the best yeah. way to go. Sun, for our sun exposure good too? Yeah, because of vitamin D, yes. obviously. You don't want to, you know, you've yeah, got to right. use sun factor. You've been in Australia, you will know about this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, vitamin D. I think we should be taking vitamin D supplements in the winter. And let's move on now to erectile dysfunction. Okay. Just give me, again, the common signs. I, I can kind of guess them. <laughs> you can't get an erection or struggling or not. Yeah. These are common signs. Yeah, the mo most important one actually is not having a morning erection anymore. So most morning men. Glory. Yeah, most men will have that, won't they? Um, is that the technical term? <laughs> <laughs> one I use, but <laughs> I'll use it. we will allow it. Yes, yeah. um, yes you, that's a really important one. It's when that goes, it's a sign that something's not quite uh. right. So losing your morning erections. Obviously, as men get older, erections are going to be less. We know that 50% of men at 50 will have erection problems, are likely yeah. to have erection problems, and these are the ones that admit to it. Yeah, wonder one, how many percentage are not admitting to it. Exactly. Are. So, yeah, well, signs will be not having an erection or an erection that's not lasting for intercourse. So you might start with it. So when you're talking about erections, for instance, you know, you said people from the age of 50. Uh, yeah, but it happens, it's happening younger and younger. Again, along with testosterone, you know, yeah. issues, erectile problems are definitely happening at a younger age. And we're see, I'm seeing men in their late teens, early 20s having erection problems. And that's for multiple reasons. Wow. we might discuss as well. Yeah, why, what are they? Let's go into it. Mm, okay, so I think probably the biggest reason that there are erection problems in the younger age are psychological ones, and it's probably used due to excess porn use. Yeah. And because 
the trouble with porn is it's it's not you know I'm not anti porn. No, but I agree with you. I believe you. I'm, but I'm on your end. <laughs> I'm on your fence <laughs> right now. Very careful what you say with all yeah. this, isn't it? Now, <laughs> too many puns. Um, yeah. Because there is such uh, what's the word for it? You know, there's such perceived cons- misconceptions with how you have to be sexually yeah. and how you have to look and how long you have to go on for yeah. and what people need to look like and do and you know and where they have to do it and I think there's so much pressure from the porn industry yeah. and it's unrealistic sex yeah. and then that puts pressure on men for so not, that's perform- one. For for not performing yeah, not performing like they see yeah. in the, on the porn and then also you've got the problem of excess porn use so they're not turned on when they're having regular sex yeah. anymore because it's not quite the same and it's overstimulation by porn so when you come to be with your partner to have sex, it's, it's less exciting so i sometimes do have to give people homework of not looking at porn great i know it needs not to be done more too much in, but then we bring it down again from that like maybe my dad's generation my dad's in his 70s you know they'd have a magazine yeah so it's so acc- like or there'd be a story the story, plumber would come yeah. or, you, or the back of the magazine you have your little stories in the yeah. mags you know what I mean so and now you've got porn so accessible like you can literally I think it's probably the most viewed thing online yeah and it's n- you know it's not just regular sex is there there's oh. full on everything a- available out there so then when you come to have regular sex it's not quite as exciting as yeah. perhaps what you've seen and everything is dumbed down mm. So that then, is a problem. So th- there's a correlation right now where I'm just thinking, so we're talking about everything's become easier. Yeah. So when we think about that, and I go back now 60 years, loads of builders, loads of people working on farms, my, or even further, mines and back, hard-working men. Yeah. Now we've got more people now that are accessible to so many things on their doorstep that they yeah. don't have to get up and go for things. No. So what's the need now of chasing a woman when well, we can watch porn within a minute? Well... This is true. And then and it plays an effect now of um, our urges and tendencies because you don't get us off, not you, but women don't get us off as anymore, no. so we'll go to plan B. Yeah, and, and what will come in the future is cyber sex. Mm. Um, that's cyber another, sex? That's is another that topic again. Yeah, it's so like what, virtual sex. VAs, yeah, the, the, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so a colleague of mine has done quite a lot of research into it, and it's, it will be a thing, or we'll you know, have sex with robots rather than people. We're, so we're, it's a bit sad, really, because we'll lose sad. that human yeah. touch won't we well yeah. maybe it won't happen no, but it uh, might let's, let's i think it will it to a degree i, I hope it doesn't but i think it will happen mm, there will be some of that but this is the world mm. it's how so we adapt and deal with it i suppose and what you want to and how you want to face it isn't it and whether you want to um involve yourself with these changes to a degree it's funny you say that because uh, there's a couple of people i know who are um semen retention coaches okay so, yes on the social wow you wouldn't hear about but they Young guys, and they've experienced the same tendencies of urges of, oh, it's easy to just go yeah, have a masturbate and watch porn. And now they're like, well, no, like, you know, there's things out there like called No Nut November. Have you ever heard of that? Where people will go a No Nut for a month? Yeah. And <laughs> this is not a good t- idea. But then what it, what it does in it, though, is like you, your testosterone levels, I'd say, would be more increased. Is it right? It depends because they're also increased when you have sex as well. So it varies. But if you're watching porn. Uh, yeah, I suppose you probably, probably overuse everything yeah. then, don't you? So everything gets a bit worn out. Mm-hmm. And I just think, yeah, if you, if you stop anything, you will crave it more, won't you? Mm-hmm. So it's quite a good idea. So if, if, you know, if couples are having problems, I often say, right, you're banned from having sex. No sex. Take it off the table yeah. for a month. Don't do anything. You're, you've got to keep intimacy so you can hold hands, you can cuddle, Kiss. showers, massage together, but forget sex. Mm. And half the time, you know, people who weren't having sex will come back to me. Oh, I'm really sorry. We accidentally ended up having sex. And like, okay, well. So you, choose, you do reverse psychology? Yes. I yeah, love it. Exactly. Love it. So you're like, don't, don't, don't. Yeah. And, like, and then they're like, oh, I'm really sorry what happened was. And you're like, oh, well, that's yeah. great. Because that was what we what wanted. wanted but, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good guys. Anyone so, out there now? A few tricks. So where were we at? Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. We're talking about ED, weren't we? So yeah. ED. So in the younger men, it tends to, it tends to be psychological. On the whole, not always, but um, we're seeing more of that. And then uh, in older men, we're going to go back down to, yeah, problems with diabetes, obesity. And I always say that erectile dysfunction is a heart attack until proven otherwise or heart, a risk of heart disease until proven otherwise. And that's why men have to tell us about it because it needs to be investigated. And the reason for this 
if you're in, are you interested? Yeah, 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 come on. Is I'm in. Okay, well, in. I'm giving the serious look. Oh, yeah, yeah, you look very serious. Well, I've mentioned heart attacks and yeah, things yeah. You know, when we're talking about sex. But it's important because um, the penile arteries are. Now, this is, I can't do show you this, can I, to scale, but uh, much to the camera, yeah. are this size. This isn't to scale. And the heart arteries are this size. Yeah. So these ones, so the penile arteries will block yeah. round about two to three years before the heart ones block. Uh, so it is a warning sign until proven otherwise, because there are other causes yeah. of heart disease. Uh, so that's why it's important to get it checked. And it can also be the first sign of diabetes. Yes. So often I have men will present with erectile dysfunction or do the bloods and it's like, ah, actually, you're mm. type 2 diabetic. It's interesting though, because now you're talking about the heart. So our Welsh doctor, Dr. Richard Lawrence, he's in North Wales and he's, he's a heart doctor. Yeah. And he said common signs of heart is obviously erectile dysfunction. Yeah, in men, so they found that when patients attend in emergency departments with heart attacks, when they've asked them retrospectively, did you ever suffer from erectile dysfunction, over half will say yes. Wow. So because it because it's because you know, so, it's blocking that yeah because they are blocking first and that's mm. one of the major causes of erection problems mm. and then you've got your diabetes testosterone deficiency yeah. um, other drugs and things can cause it smoking smoking is really bad for erections yeah, and what's the studies on smoking right now have we increased over time or decreased. I think we're all changing to vapes, aren't vapes, we? But which is nicotine weird. is bad. So it's not just, with smoking, it's not just that the smoking blocks the arteries. Mm. The nicotine itself is a chemical that interferes with the whole erection process. Mm. So it's a double whammy with smoking. The smoking and the nicotine both cause problems. And alcohol, same, same. Although it makes us more um, relaxed and disinhibited. Yeah, uh, yeah it numbs everything well most that's people why you, that's know. why you can normally last yeah. a bit you can last a lot longer with alcohol yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's good for premature ejaculation but yeah. not for erections <laughs> <laughs> this is a great conversation <laughs> <laughs> it's what you want to do of a morning isn't yeah, it yeah <laughs> this is perfect um so what are the obviously is there any studies that are, that are happening right now which aren't out released but which are quite exciting in this realm of you know, testosterone deficiency and erectile, di erectile dysfunction? There's loads of studies on both and Talk loads of them will have proven that there is a massive link between testosterone deficiency and erectile dysfunction. And a lot of men end up on drugs that help erections, but also will end up on testosterone as well because you often need the two to make erections work. Mm. So you will need to have adequate testosterone levels, but often you will need the drugs that yeah. help erections as well. It, you need both things. So for instance, right, I think I've spoken a little bit earlier, but if I said to you, Doc, I think my, we proved my levels are not fully deplete, but they are lower than normal. Yeah. I want kids. Yeah. In the next five years or 10 years, what would you say to me? So if you were saying your testosterone levels are normal. Mm. Not normal, uh, just below, like, you know, there's normal and yeah. whatever is bottom. A bit of normal, below normal. Yeah, below normal. Okay, yeah. a little bit below normal. Then... We can do stuff, so we can, you can, I, there's a drug that you can take instead of testosterone, mm. which doesn't affect fertility. So there are a couple of options there. You could use those. You could go on testosterone and something called the HCG that we mentioned, or you could do testosterone for a bit, and then when you want to have children, stop, and then yeah. have HCG. So there's ways around it. Ways around we could it, yeah. do it, yeah. But then the advice from this I'm taking is that people out there are doing this, you know, freelance as in they're doing it via via yeah. just YouTube and figuring it out. Like That's they, really not they're a really good idea. screwing themselves up. It is because you so need to be monitored with this that you're not having too high levels, that it's not affecting your blood count. Because mm. you don't want your blood to be too thick because it risks strokes and heart attacks. Mm. So it's really important to not do it. <laughs> Definitely not, no. So trying to think my train of thought right now we, we've this. gone off back to testosterone, testosterone we're trying to do fine. E we go back to go, ed go, let's go back to yeah you, are you, you happy want? to continue yeah yeah all go right for your life give, well give me some more information on it more than anything because obviously there's signs of 50 when you're in your 55s people are waking up with not an erection but youngsters are picking it up now yeah again what are the, the are there similar patterns if i said to you like the, the things that someone could do on a daily basis which could increase it would be eating yeah 100 percent. stop because, watching porn right yeah cut your porn use if you happen to yeah. be watching it or Watch regular porn stuff or involve your partner yeah. in the porn if you really want to do that. Yeah. Um, so that there's and there are other techniques psychologically that we can do. You can speak to psychosexual therapists and things like that. Definitely exercise. 
mm. increase your exercise because it will increase the blood flow to the penis, Amazing. which is really important. Anything that increases blood flow is a good thing. So minimum of how many days a week would you say to someone? Okay. I'm at six days a week training now, but <laughs> I want to wow. say to someone else, if they were like... They've gone from nothing. What is the minimum standard you'd say to someone? Well, if you could exercise for just 20 minutes a day, you will increase your insulin sensitivity mm. for like 12 to 24 hours. If you did twice a day, it'd be 24 hours. It increases it for 12 hours. Wow. So that's amazing, isn't it? And that's yeah. just 20 minutes, and that could be brisk walking. Wow. Just a so walk then. Get yourself brisk. a dog. Go so you're, yeah. Power walk. Get yourself a dog. Yeah. yeah. You have to be a little bit short of breath, but still talking. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, moderate just well, milder exercise, no. really, 20 minutes a day. And that will benefit you on so many levels because obviously if you're out and about walking, you've got the endorphins, you're in, yeah. you know, outside, which is all good. Yeah. So definitely exercise, stop smoking mm. or vaping because that's really bad for erections. Stop alcohol because mm. that's not good for erections. Yeah. Um, and diet because anything that causes inflammation is really bad for erections. So processed food yeah. stuff like that is not good it's crazy though right because growing up my education on food from family and everything was all quick food packet food so your, bad. your smiley faces your, your dinosaur chicken you know uh, oh i know so we, we all did we it. all got brought I up know. on this i know it's it cheap and, cheap and cheerful as they say but it's not the way our future you know well this is why british people are so fat mm. you go to the south of france italy spain Totally but different. Completely different. We're one of the fat. I think we probably are the fattest nation in Europe. Really? If you look at the charts, I think it starts in the world. It probably is the states, then us. It's we're, it's awful, and m most of this, I think, is from packaged food because yeah. they don't eat it in Europe so much. You know, Mediterranean diet is the way to go. Mediterranean diet. Hundred percent. No. Mediterranean diet the way, is the way to longevity. You know, look at the blue zones yeah. across the world, and most of that is because they are eating oily fish. Mm. Broccoli. I'm not sponsored by broccoli, I was but say, I feel tell I should you what, be. You know? guess, <laughs> uh, might have to get a plug off this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, vegetables and less carbs. Yeah. Um, as much as I like a cut, bit of toast, mm. that's still processed, isn't yeah. it? And things with so many ingredients in them. Yeah. And, and I think our gut microbiome is going to be a new. Th well, it is, isn't okay. it? It's so important as well because, in effect, it's an it's an organ, an organ in itself. And keeping that healthy will reduce inflammation. Inflammation is bad. Inflammation, yeah. Well, before we roll into that, then, yeah. um, I definitely want to give a shout-out to our sponsors ahead of the game. Yeah. The food place down just down the road. Their foods are very nutritious. Plenty of broccoli oh, in their food. Oh, plenty of broccoli in their food, excellent. And um, <laughs> they deal a lot with, obviously, athletes and high-performance people and your day-to-day -day people. But the food there is actually giving you the nutrients and energy, which generally helps your well-being. So yeah. ahead of the game in Bridgend and in Puthcall, Oh, they are in Puthcall now, yeah, just yeah, down by the by pier. Cult. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you get that, and if you want your yeah. donut after, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have your healthy protein and then, and then get your donut. Yeah. yeah, everything in moderation is Everything good in moderation, though. hundred percent. I think that. So yeah, because you got to live. You got to. But I, I think that was my thing when I reflect on myself. I'm like this zero or hundred. So I've gone on crazes where I've done seventy five hard and gone paleo for seventy five days, fasting. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, pescatarian. But then I realized you do. Uh, you kind of do a full loop. Yeah. And you go back to everything in moderation. And because it, it's not sustainable, no. is it? You have to have a lifestyle that's sustainable. Mm. So, you know, you try and be good 70% of the time. Yeah. I think that's more than reasonable. Mm. And that's probably a lot behind the fasting in a way. Because if you're doing the intermittent fasting, you know, like a 5-2 or something like that, yeah. it makes you focused for some of the days. But yeah. okay, don't uh, go mad, but you can... Yeah. Treat yourself to other days because, yeah, you that's reasonable, of course. And you want to be happy, and yeah, <laughs> but you'd also don't want to be diabetic and fat. No, <laughs> I'd rather be on the other end of the spectrum than diabetic yeah. and fat. Um, but I'm not a fan of these m fad diets, no, and like you said, moderation, moderation, yes. yeah. You like a glass, maybe have a glass here in there, too. Yeah, I'm yes, I would be for that. <laughs> <laughs> well. Any other advice you'd like to say to men listening to this right now regarding testosterone, erectile dysfunction? If you've got any common symptoms or anything, what would you say to them? Do you know what? I think the most important thing to say to men is if you are concerned, go and see somebody about it and ask for a check. Mm. It's so important because it can be a pointer to other diseases and that's why you know, we want to get you checked. But also, it can make your life a lot better. Yeah. Um, so that would be the most important thing. Go and get a check. Even You're concerned. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even concerned. But I'm curious right now. I'm like. I want to get a check to have an MOT. Would you recommend that to someone or not? 
uh, you can do to know what your levels are. Yeah. We have the difficulty that we do not have set testosterone levels for age, so uh, they're not age matched. So what and what is okay for one person may not be yeah. okay for somebody else. We don't know, so that is a difficulty thing. We can only go on a guideline of what are classified as abnormally low testosterone levels, and that's where we go off. And it's a bit generic across yeah. the board, so it's not tailored to individuals, but. That's how we have to work it because also with testosterone, it's a bit different than for women. Yeah. All women will have a menopause, mm. but not all men will have, and I don't like the term menopause for this reason, yeah. because not all men will reduce their testosterone to a level that they're symptomatic. Most men actually will maintain adequate levels throughout life. Hence, men can father children late into yeah. their older years. So most men will actually be okay. And it's not really an anti-age drug as such or like an HRT, but some men will have this problem and it will happen as they get older. So it's mm. not a, not everybody. So it's not a fall off the cliff tendency? No, no. it's different as opposed to women. That's mm. where, you know, we will all fall off a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> but you men <laughs> Unfortunately. won't. Unfortunately. So that's, yes, yeah. yeah, that, there is, I've, obviously we haven't gone down the women's spec, but it is no. things obviously help women in that aspect. Obviously yeah, and well. yeah, and women can have testosterone as well. We, you know, we haven't gone into that, but mm. it can help. I no. wonder if it's going a bit too far that way. No, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I'm very, this has been a really good episode. Very no knowledgeable for me and hopefully a lot of my listeners because I do know there's people out there are doing it freelancing and trying to figure it out and yeah. are, too, are too maybe a nervous to come to someone like you, Janine, and, yeah. and, and breaking the... And I worry that there's a lot of men's health forums out there that link people to, dare I say it, sort of dodgier yeah. companies that will just chuck everyone on testosterone and not monitor so as much as a lot of men aren't getting checked there is a co there are um, a group of men that will also go on these forums and then go down the route of being treated yeah. wrongly and to wrong levels and not being monitored or they may have something else going on and that's important as yeah. well you don't want to go down both either ways you know you want want to be treated properly and yeah. That, yeah, that worries me as well because like, there is a lot of that out there and a lot of that stems from the gym world and a lot yeah. of the guys that write on these forums although they do know a fair bit there's often misinformation of there course. and how, how are we how are men supposed to know you know you go on these forums you're going to believe things that are on there it's difficult so be careful what you believe on these forums speak to a professional really love that so how could someone find you Janine you can find me, uh, and now this sounds like an advert. I moved from my broccoli advert to my <laughs> advert. Uh, well, I want I'm at Men's Health Wales. Men's Health Wales. Men's Health Wales, yeah. If you just Google Men's Health Wales, well, actually, it's menshealthwales.com. There we are. That's amazing. So you can find me there. Amazing, because I just really want to really push this today and give people that clarity on how they can do this, and it's you know it's really a simple step for people. And yeah. you're based in Puthcall as well. I'm Puthcall. I've got a clinic in Canelli. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Well, I'm just in Puthcall as well, so very my neighbours now. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I always wrap this up um, with all my guests. Just what are you grateful for, Janine? What am I grateful for? Yeah. Oh, my life. We need another hour. Yeah. So much. I'm grateful. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn into one of these people that says what they're grateful for. Yeah, please oh, do Oh, health, it. number one. Amazing. Being healthy has got to be, your, to me, it's the number one, isn't it, for happiness yeah. and stuff like that my family and my friends and my friend that introduced me to you otherwise i wouldn't be here <laughs> yeah, um, she's yeah. a good egg so that's it mainly amazing i'm grateful for you coming on today to share knowledge awareness and yeah. all the amazing things you're doing for men out there as well not not just the women but the, w the men as well because we need more people like you thanks yeah and it's i'm really grateful to have the opportunity to come on and speak to you and get more men seen and sorted hopefully you're going to be a busy woman even yeah. busier <laughs> thank you yeah. so much thanks ollie don't just talk it walk it walk it zone don't just talk it walk it don't just talk it walk it walk it zone don't just talk it walk it walk it zone